Hey guys, this is Tony Paradis. I'm a registered dietitian and personal trainer. Please check out my website at foodandfitnessonline.com and go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get updates on the videos that I'll be posting. All right, I was on the Food and Fitness Facebook page. If you haven't liked it, go ahead and check us out. A lot of great stuff, recipes, motivation, and articles that I post on there uh, very regularly. But I had asked you guys a question is there anything you'd like for me to cover in my next YouTube video? And I got some good replies. One that really stuck out to me was, what do you do about a plateau? And what do you do about a fat loss plateau? So that's what I'd like to cover today. So, we'll be covering fat loss plateaus. I'll be talking about set points, psychological uh, reasons why you may plateau, energy expenditure, and metabolic damage. And what does that mean, and how does it apply to you? So let's start off with the definition of a set point. And a set point is basically an idea that your body is comfortable at a certain weight and it resists change to get down to a weight that maybe is your goal weight. And it does this by a number of different reasons. Most of these reasons happen psychologically. So either you're aware of it or maybe you're unaware of it, but it has less to do with changes in your metabolism, changes in your hormonal status, uh, in your thyroid, and more to do with some of the behind the scenes stuff psychological. So that's my next point. So let me get into that a little bit. So while a set point is not your body saying, okay, let's slow down the metabolism, let's slow down um, you know, fat burning hormone production and those kinds of things. While this does happen as you start to lose weight, especially if you start to lose lean body mass. Overall, if you're eating a non-moronic diet, if you're you know, just maintaining a calorie cut and eating a reasonable diet in a deficit, in other words, so you're expending more calories than you're losing, but you find it hard to lose weight, you're not really creating a deficit. And so how, how is this happening? This happens in one, one reason is your what's called your non-exercise induced thermogenesis. Okay, and this is a fancy word for any non-purposeful exercise that you get throughout the day. So a big uh, example of this would be like fidgeting. So do you fidget at your desk? Do you fidget um, at the office or at your chair? Do you burn extra calories just by kind of being a hyper person? Another example would be just your active lifestyle. So are you getting up off the couch? Are you moving around more? Are you getting up to go do those kinds of things? And over time, this really does start to add up to extra calorie burn. So your set point may be resistant to your non-exercise induced thermogenesis. So for example, uh, you may find yourself just moving around more, being less active, just having less motivation. So you can understand why that's more of a, psycholo a psychology thing then it really is a hormonal response. So that may happen first. It, it may happen to you, it may not. There's other things that can happen too. Uh, the other thing that can happen from your set point, and your set point isn't like it's trying to sabotage you, it's just these things that just kind of happen naturally, is you may have an increase in appetite. So if you're not weighing and measuring your foods and you're not being consistent with keeping a food journal, which is the number one most important tool and most effective tool that you can do to, to lose weight. If you don't currently keep a food journal, I would highly recommend it. If you don't currently weigh and measure your foods, or if you've never done that, I would recommend starting to at least in your mind be able to recognize what a cup looks like or what eight ounces of chicken or beef and those things look like. Well, so what the set point will do is it will make eight ounces of chicken really look like six ounces of chicken. Okay, or it'll make two cups of rice really look like a cup and a half of rice to you. So what you were eating before gradually starts getting bigger as kind of a hunger response and a psychological response. Another thing that can happen with a set point would be losing motivation. So you may think that you're doing everything right, but if you really look at the overall things that are going on throughout the day, you're not really weighing all of your foods, or maybe you're going out to eat, maybe just one extra time and getting the big french fry off the menu or something like that. Just little things really start to add up, and that can make a big change over time 
in a weight loss plateau and adding up to a weight loss plateau, especially for females. And I say this for females because females generally tend to have less lean body mass and they have smaller basal metabolic rates, so the smaller amount of calories that they burn at rest. So a mistake made from adding an extra tablespoon of oil or misestimating a portion size can really add up to, to be a bigger deal in somebody who can't create as large of a deficit as let's say like a six foot tall, um, very muscular man who's trying to lose weight. So there's a lot of psychological things that can happen. And with my experience as a dietitian and working with individuals, psychological, that's number one, okay? So don't look at any kind of special supplements or any kind of uh, quick solutions or band-aids or anything like that. Start weighing and measuring your foods and really making sure that you're counting all your calories and that you're removing any kind of other variable. A lot of people, when, when I have them do this, they lose a lot of weight in the beginning, but over time it starts to slow down. It's not because the program doesn't work. It's not because they're eating carbohydrates and that's the answer, or they're eating too many fats and that's the answer, or they have a slow metabolism, or maybe it's in their genetics and it's just not in the cards for them. People lose more weight in the beginning. It could be because of carbohydrate drop, but let's assume that's not, not the issue. Because they're more excited. You get more excited about a new diet program. You get more excited about uh, you know, changing your lifestyle and doing all these things, but maybe like a month later, it starts becoming a little bit more of a chore to you or you're not really in it for the long haul. This is the reason why you're experiencing a fat loss plateau. And this is going to be 99% of the people. So I would really look at that first. I would really start counting calories, and I can't say that enough. I'm probably beating a dead horse here, so I'm going to move on. So set point is your body's resistance to change. It's probably happening, happening from a psychological standpoint. All right, well, let's say that your set point really isn't a big issue to you and you're losing weight just fine. You're counting calories. You're keeping up with that. You're keeping up with your exercise. You're leading an active lifestyle, all those sorts of things. Let's look at energy expenditure. That could be another reason why you are not experiencing any more fat loss. So, of course, fat loss is all about energy expenditure. Forget what all the gurus are saying, you know, is it carbohydrates, is it fats, is it sugar, is it organic foods, is it processed foods, is it clean eating, is it the paleo diet? No. If you want to lose fat, it's all about creating a calorie deficit. You create a calorie deficit by taking how much you're intaking and creating more of a deficit. So you're going to eat less and you're going to move more. And specifically, eating less is going to be the most effective way of doing that. Exercise does help, and it does help a great deal. But you can't out-train a bad diet. In other words, if your diet is not under control at all, you're not going to be able to do your 5K training or go to the gym uh, you know, three, four, five times a week and undo a Chinese buffet meal Okay, if you're eating like that every day. So... It's not about the kinds of foods that you're eating, it's about amounts. Let me say that again, it's not about the type of food that you're eating, it's about amounts. It's about portion control, it's about the amount of calories that come from that. So if you are on top of your nutrition and you're not experiencing any fat loss, you're experiencing a fat loss plateau, it could be, it could be because your body has uh, stabled out, is reaching a stable weight at the amount of calories that you're on. So if this happens to you, and you can rule out um, you know, cheating on your meal plan or cheating on your portion sizes, and you've ruled out those other two things, and you're sure it's an energy expenditure issue, what I want you to do is I want you to take however many calories you're eating right now and cut 10% off of those calories. Okay, you have a little wiggle room if you want to do 5%, if you want to do 15%, Okay, that's okay, but let's assume you've already been losing weight. Take what you're eating now and cut 10% as a starting point. See how your body adapts after a month, especially for females. You want to reassess month to month. Uh, this is because of hormone changes. This is because of water weight fluctuations. And weight loss is not going to be linear. Okay, You may think that you're going to lose 1 to 2 pounds a week on average, but... You may not experience any weight loss for a couple weeks, and then you may all of a sudden drop three pounds. 
So check your weight month to month. You don't want to get really hasty with making radical changes to your diet. So just a moderate calorie cut, 10% from where you're at. And let me talk a little bit about starvation mode and the fact that there is no starvation mode. If you are still overweight and you're not losing weight, it's because you're eating too much. There's no other way around it, ruling out uh, any kind of thyroid or any kind of metabolic disease or anything like that. If you've been checked for that and you're fine and you're not losing weight, it's because you're eating too much. Now you may not be aware of this. You, it may be coming from added oils that you're not aware of or uh, you're not measuring portion control and all those kinds of things I already talked about. But let's say that you're eating 1,200 calories and you're not losing weight. Okay, the first thing I would argue is are you really eating 1,200 calories? Because even though you may think you're eating 1,200 calories or it may seem that way, just due to misestimations, maybe 1,200 on paper is actually 1,400 in real life. And you'd, you'd really be surprised as to how often this happens, especially with a lot of my clients. Uh, this has to do with the set point and misestimations and just kind of the psychological barriers with that. So whatever number you're at, it's, it's really an estimate. It's, it's an estimation. These things are estimations at best. Take wherever you're at and minus 10% of those calories. See how you do. Well, you may be afraid of saying, well, uh, you know, I'm getting close to 1,000 calories or I'm going under 1,000 calories or something like that. If that's the case, then so be it. Okay, that's where you're at. You need to cut calories to continue to lose weight especially for females. You're, you're not going to get as many calories as a guy. You know, for me, I can cut weight just fine on uh, 2,500 calories, and, and after that first leg of the journey, I can cut weight on 2,000 calories. Okay, you may have to cut weight on 1,200 calories, and if you're short of stature, stature and don't have a lot of muscle mass, maybe you'll be cutting weight on 1,000 calories. Okay, there is no such thing as starvation mode. Your body cannot defy the laws of physics. You're not going to gain weight back from eating less calories, you'll simply lose more weight. And once you get to your goal weight, then you can start slowly adding back in calories to see what your uh, maintenance calories are. But go ahead and cut those calories. I get asked that question a lot, especially on the MyFitnessPal.com forums. You know, people will message me and say, oh, you know, I've been doing this and this and I can't lose weight. My answer is always cut 10% of your calories. The end, end of story. So let's go ahead and move on. All right, let's talk a little bit about metabolic damage and that, how that may be an issue that's causing your fat loss plateau. Uh, okay, so metabolic damage is an idea that you've created too much stress on your body, you've created too much damage by dieting hardcore for a long period of time. Uh, let me go ahead and say that you, you do not have metabolic damage. Okay. This is going to be very rare. This is going to be more in the bodybuilding community or the fitness model community where you're achieving very, very lean body weight and extreme kind of dieting methods and maintaining those low body weights for a long period of time. As Along with that, with doing excessive amounts of cardio, with doing excessive amounts of weight training and metabolic conditioning and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is really something that I'm not an expert on. Uh, because right now I don't train a lot of bodybuilders, but uh, Lane Norton uh, and his website BioLane, he has a really good video on that. Uh, if I can find that later, I'll go ahead and link that on here so you guys can check that out. Uh, I really can't do justice to the topic. Uh, Lane's a great guy. He's a natural bodybuilder, uh, PhD in nutrition sciences, uh, overall smart guy, and has a great channel. Um, you know, I would love to have the kind of success, uh, even a portion of the success that he has. Uh, someday in my nutrition career so hats off to you Lane Norton I'm gonna link your video and uh, you guys should check that out if you're interested in, in seeing metabolic damage but it is something that that can happen and so if you're in this category what you want to do is you want to reverse diet in other words do a refeed uh, fancy names for just adding back in calories you slowly want to add back in carbohydrates to your uh, to your daily intake until you reach a stabilization so that you can once again cut weight from there if you want to uh, but like I said this is not you 99.9% .9 sure that if you're watching this video you're you're not losing weight because of either a psychological uh, thing you're not weighing measuring your food and that's gonna be almost everybody in this video so thanks for checking out my video 
Uh, we're talking about fat loss plateaus today. We talked about set points, how that's your body's resistance to change in uh, your weight. We talked about the psychological barriers and how this is probably you. And this is really the answer that a lot of people don't want to hear, but hey, it's just how it works. You want to lose weight, take some advice, start tracking your calories, start weighing and measuring your food, and see the results from there. If this isn't, if this isn't something that you can do on your own, hire a trainer, hire a dietitian, uh, make friends on the MyFitnessPal website, do something to keep yourself accountable. Okay, so... I've been beating the dead horse, let's move on. Uh, energy expenditure, so if you're not losing weight because you're afraid of cutting calories or you're uh, worried about a, uh, what do you call it, starvation mode, there is no starvation mode. You create an energy deficit, you're going to lose more weight, the end. And finally, metabolic damage, Lane Norton has a great video on this, uh, check it out and I'll link it up here. My name is Tony Paradis. I'm a registered and licensed dietitian. Please check out my website at foodandfitnessonline.com and subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. And check out our Facebook page. I'm always trying to put information out there to you guys. I appreciate your comments. Leave some comments, like the video, and shoot me some ideas for another video. I'll be happy to talk about it, share my two cents and my experience uh, with working with other people. And I wish you guys the best in your fat loss journeys. Um, if you need any help, I'm always happy to help you guys out. Just ask me on the Facebook page. I'll be happy to give you my two cents. Anyways, check it out. Appreciate you for watching, and join me next time. And I'll create a video. Uh, when I look at those other topics on the Facebook page, I'll get around to it. Thanks, guys.